Hi, I'm Janine Delorfano from Alp Angel Bergamascos, and this is an instructional video on caring for your Bergamasco sheepdog's coat. I have with me Anthea. She's five years old and in a shorter coat. Um, she has some trouble around her muzzle and her chin, which is common with these dogs. Um, they tend to get really matted in the face area, especially if the face stays wet after drinking. So, Anthea is a five year old Bergamasco with um, a face that mats easily especially since her mouth and her chin area tend to stay wet after she drinks. I'm using a little slicker brush. Um, this is a slicker. A slicker brush tends to have many, many little needles all around the face of the brush, and sometimes they're metal and sometimes they're plastic. Um, I have a little one here, which is really good for the face, and they come in different sizes. Um, she lets me brush her face, but underneath a lot of the smooth coat, she has a lot of matting, and so some of it needs to be broken up by hand and then I'll continue to brush that out. The face, chin, muzzle, head and ears of the Bergamasco should be brushed out if at all possible. Uh, with some dogs we have um, more matting than others and it's impossible but I try to keep them brushed out and it keeps the face a little bit cleaner. So she's letting me get most of the matting out here. Um, in this area, this is where the problems arise. You usually get these thick tufts that are matted, as you can see here. This is all matted here, so I'm going to break this up with my hands into little tiny strips. It's kind of like opening a cotton ball. Once I get some of this separated and opened, I'll be able to brush some of it out. If I can't brush it out, that's fine. She'll just have very thin flocks on her face, which is also okay. You wanna be um, really careful to make sure that there's no matting around the eyes. Hair around the eyes should be smooth. And you know, you might have to do this um, every couple of days um, just to make sure that the matting doesn't reoccur. She has some, some mats right around the ear here. So I'm going to make these a little bit smaller. And it sounds like it's hurting the dog, but it's really not, and she actually enjoys this. Now I won't be able to brush all of this out unless I spent a very long time on it, but if she has thin little flocks here, I'm okay with that. These won't get wet, so they won't become a problem. But I'll break up what I can around the face. And the same thing um, happens with the chin. With the chin, we, we do the same thing. It's a little tougher because they often won't hold their face up for you. Sometimes you just have to feel underneath, break them up with your hands. Um, if she has her head tilted, I can see a little bit of it. But I'm getting a lot of hair out on my brush, and that's completely fine as well. Sometimes the hair will actually break off. Um, and that's, that's no problem. You can just um, dispose of it. It's not coming out of the follicle, so it's not hurting the dog. It's just breakage. Her ears happen to be fine. She doesn't have any matting on them, so I'm just going to leave those alone and continue to brush those often, probably three times a week. So those little mats that we opened up earlier on her face are now pretty much brushable, except for the ones by the ears. You can always break them up a little further if you need to. Her chin feels okay. What we have going on here on the rear end, um, we have flocks that are about three inches long, maybe a little bit longer. 
And um, especially in the rear where you have a lot of goat hair, and goat hair is this wiry part of the coat that you see coming through. They happen to be the white hairs on her, and they're stiffer than the rest of the coat. Um, it tends to mat a little bit thicker in those areas, and so they require a little bit more attention. Here she has flocks that have kind of rejoined with other flocks. The last time I um, went through her coat was probably maybe a month ago. So these have joined up with other flocks since then. And I'm just going to re-separate them. And this is the kind of maintenance that you sometimes need to do for the life of the dog. And you just need to check the coat every so often. And make sure that the flocks are all separated and are not becoming huge clumps. Obviously she likes this. Most Bergamascos find this very relaxing. And she's letting me do her legs. And the same thing goes with the legs and the rest of the body. And you want to make sure that the area right around the tail and the, um, and the behind is also all opened up as it tends to clump. Sometimes I shave the belly. Um, her belly was last shaven when she had puppies over a year ago, so it's all grown back. And she does have little flocks on her belly, but I just try to keep them thin. And you can hear that ripping sound. It's not actually, I'm not losing any hair here. No hair is coming out. It's just ripping the flock in half. Of course, if they don't like this as much as she does, you can always give them a break and then, uh, you know, do a little bit at a time or do it over the course of a week. The rest of her leg flocks seem to be pretty well separated. She doesn't have any on her feet. Those are, that's probably because I've taken them off at some point to trim them a little bit to keep them clean from mud. And now she's letting us see her chin a little bit. Can we see your chin? And you can see that that's brushable. So I'll continue to go through her entire body, go over each area, and make sure that those flocks are all separated. So here we have kind of a big two flocks that have joined, and you can see how they join at the root. So they were once separated and now they're all together. So I'm going to just peel those in half and separate them again. I have with me Amira who's nine months old and um, is just having her first change of coat, just starting to mat. And also she's a black coated dog, so the coat's a little bit different. Um, Anthea was a Merle and has a lot of goat hair. Uh, the Merle dogs tend to have thicker coat um, with more coarse, more coarse hair, that third coat that you see. And so with the black dogs often, they don't get as much goat hair. And so the coat's a lot finer and softer. And so the matting feels different. And it's sometimes even more difficult um, because it's, it's hard to separate easily. So um, she also doesn't like her coat work so much. So it takes a little bit more patience with her. Um, I'm going to start with her face. I'll start with her head, actually. And I'm using a regular brush. This is not a slicker brush. It's just a regular dog brush. And. Um, I'll start with her head since she likes that, doesn't mind it as much. And sometimes you have to hold them by the collar, otherwise she'd probably walk away from me. And I'll give her a little brushing. At this point I'm not really brushing her coat very much. I'm letting it do its thing and kind of get matted. I'm just paying attention to it often and making sure that it's not getting too clumpy in any one area. Where I'm starting to see mats, come here, come. Where I'm starting to see mats on her is particularly the face around the, um, the cheeks, behind the ears, the rear end right here, 
and a little bit on her side, so um, we'll try to open that up a little bit more. I'm using this little slicker brush again on her face. She doesn't like it as much, although she thinks this is more of a game. So we'll just get her face brushed out a little bit, which is pretty smooth because I've been keeping up with it. And then here, if you can see, we have the beginning of some flockage. So this is kind of what it looks like when it starts on a black puppy. We have these big clumps that are matted. And around here, there's all smooth hair. This is just a big isolated clump. And then here we have more clumps. The coat here has a very defined flocking pattern where you can see the roots are clearly breathable and um, are not matted to the skin. They start about, in her case, about quarter of an inch up. So I'm going to take these mats and I'm going to open them up. She is not crazy about this, not because it hurts, but because she's fidgety. Here we have a lot of matting. And this is typical for her age at 10 months. So I'm going to try to start opening some of this up. Come back, come back. Okay, here I have some more examples of, of how to open the coat up. So, Lotharia was much older with a regrown coat. And um, I'm just opening up some of these flocks in the back that I've kind of merged together and are all in big clumps right now. This is all one big clump. So we're going to open this up. Um, behind the ears and stuff. Here you can see the ears are always the most problematic area. Here you can see that this is all matted. This all needs to be broken up. And if you can't really tell through the top of the ear, but look, this is all matted here. This actually needs to be peeled um, into flocks. The thing about the ears is that um, a lot of people are worried about cutting the skin, which is definitely possible. And so you have to be really careful and do this in little tiny bits. Never pull from the tip of the ear out this way, as you'll rip right through the ear of the skin, which is very thin. I'm peeling this back kind of like a, um, I don't know how to explain it, but as you can see I'm peeling this back in layers. And I could feel the edge of his ears right in here. So I know that I'm not going to cut him. Okay. So now the ear is entirely open as you can see. That big clump that you saw before is completely gone. Some of this has fallen out and that's perfectly fine too. In fact, a lot of hair will break off and that's no problem. So there, his entire ear is freed up now. This will need reinforcement um, and will need to be checked every once in a while to make sure that it's not matting again. But at least the uh, skin can breathe and this will, over time, these flocks will get longer and will have a little bit more um, definition. Top of Lothario's head is really soft. No flocks there. However, behind the ears, um, he still has a lot of flocking. And some of it is clumped right now, so I'm gonna just open that up. Now the same thing with this ear. If you look at the ear, here I'm pushing back all the hair, you'll notice that this is all one big layer of clump. It's like a big layer of felt. I'm going to start peeling this back. Start peeling this back. Lothario actually really loves this. He's always been my easiest dog to groom. 
because he just genuinely loves it. Will lay here for hours and usually let me do anything I want with his coat. So I'm very lucky. I've actually let the ears go this far just for the purpose of doing the video. I normally wouldn't let them ever even get to this point. And that's the whole, um, that's the whole point is to never actually let it get matted if you can help it. Now you can see we have an ear that's opened up. His actual ear is right in here. So all of this, about two and a half inches of it, is just coat. Now, the inside part of the ear, if you can tell here, I'm not sure if you can see it here, we'll use this ear. Should be free of hair. Now here he has a little bit of matting But the actual ear itself is clean. There is some hair growing out of the ear, but the, air, the hair is not compacted. It's not impacted in, um, it's not stuck in there and there's no wax. This can stand a little clean, but it's not bad. Oh. Behind the ear, I'm going to continue to break the coat up. A couple of the flocks over here that need to be opened up. Okay, his face. It's a little shorter, um, and there's no matting there, and he has a couple little flocks here. These you can make thin. He doesn't have any matting around the eyes. This, if he does, then you just need to open it up a little bit. Make it really thin. Okay, around the neck, we use this kind of collar, rolled leather collar. The reason for it is his skin can breathe, and the coat cannot weave in through the material of the collar. This allows the coat to be worked under the collar while it's growing, so that you don't get intense matting around the neck. So even with the collar on, I can still continue to work the coat here, which is nice. If you have a collar that's too flat or too tight, it will tend to mat all the hair underneath, and then you'll have a harder time trying to open it up later. Here you can see the base of the flock. You see where the flocking starts? It starts right here. This hair, I can almost stick my finger through, is very breathable and it's not matted. So it's never tight to the skin. You can see skin on both sides. Okay, every flock should have skin on both sides. That's how the skin breathes, and that's why, even with a flocked coat, they're not prone to many skin problems. Now, another problematic is problematic area. Is, sorry, buddy, is the leg. The legs tend to get really matted and really dirty, and stay wet if you're in a rainy area. You can always trim the edges here if you want this to be neater, or if they're dragging in a lot of mud. Um, but the legs, you want the flocks thinner on the legs just because they'll be easier to clean. Another area that's a huge problem for everyone seems to be the tail. The tail should be brushed. You should be able to comb through the tail most times. Okay, so you can keep the tail brushed. Here you can see the skin of the tail and it's all free. Now here we have some flux. You want to keep these very thin because you don't want the flux to build kind of a cylindrical, big one, a big cylindrical mat around the tail because then you won't be able to, um, to get any air to the skin. So I'm going to start peeling this back in little pieces.
here we have a big clump. I'm gonna try to break this up. Sometimes flocks are so thick that you can't break them with your bare hands, which is probably the case here. Um, if that happens, sometimes you can use a scissor, but you have to be really careful when you use a scissor around the tail. Okay, now his tail is free for the most part. So, Metz is a black dog, and um, black Rogamascos tend to have a much finer coat. They have much less of the goat hair, and um, the goat hair are the little white hairs that come up here through most of the withers. Um, the rear end has a heavy concentration of it, and it's thicker than the rest of the coat. It's wiry, and that's why they call it goat hair. It feels like goat hair. Um, and it's the, it's the hair that actual, actually causes the real flocking. So um, black dogs tend to have less of it, and they tend to have finer coats. Sometimes um, it's easier to work a coat that has more goat hair because it's coarser and can kind of rip easier. Um, Metza has little flocks. Most of her coat's been chewed off by puppies in the past or by Lothario. And so she's never actually been able to grow a full coat because of that. Every time she gets her coat down to about here, it gets chewed off. So Metz is always in this kind of uh, rustic short coat, but she still has flocks, as you can see. Um, and they're exactly the same as everyone else's, except the coat's black. And here you can definitely see where you have that fine, that fine division of open coat from the skin, and then flock starts right there. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any other questions or are still having issues with your dog's coat, you can contact the Bergamasco Sheepdog Club of America or any of its breeders at www.bergamascousa.org.